have your way in this place, God, that we would even set our own thoughts aside, God, our distractions aside, Lord, and that we would, as we're going to sing, that we would make room, God, for you to do what you want to do, Lord. We open our hearts, we open our minds, we open our ears, God, and we give you our attention in this moment and trust you to be who only you can be and to do what only you can do in us. In your name we pray. Amen.
morning, God. We choose to press in. We choose to, even as Pastor Tony shared last week, we choose to maximize this moment, God. And we choose to seek you with confidence in your word, God, that says we will find you when we seek you, God. And our prayer in this house this morning is that we want more of you, God. We want more.
your voice sing it again lift your voice out loud I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to I will make room for you Now, as the band plays that, I want us to think about this just for a minute. That sounds really easy, right? We just make room. But how? How do we make room for God in every area of our life? How do we make room for God in our relationships? How do we make room for God in our finances? How do we make room for God in our minds? How do we make room for God in our bodies? Can, can I preach it this morning? How do we make room for God in our churches? It's like, hey, God, we want to give you a seat, but we're not really sure if we want you to move. How many of you want to make room for him today? Can you just close your eyes and just lock in with the Lord? Sing it again, just quietly before the Lord. I will make room. And I will make room. Come on, lock in with Jesus this morning. We're making room. We're learning. We're going on a journey. I will make room. I will make room for you. Now, here we go. If you are walking through a circumstance in your life, or maybe you're just simply, you know what, God, I'm all in today. I want to make room. The Bible says that the altar is a place where man meets God. And I get it because your altar can be right where you're at. We've got altars on both sides of the building, so it'll serve both places. But if you would say, Pastor, over the next 20, 30 seconds, over the next minute or two of my life, I've got some area of need and I just want to step out in faith and I want to believe for the Lord to step in. Some of you stepping out might just be, God, I'm making room for you. I want to invite you to come to the altar of God. Both sections, I want to invite you to step out. You can kneel, you can stand. I'm not going to have anybody anoint you today. It's just those that have a need and you want to stand before the Lord, I believe that He can heal you today. I believe that He can deliver you. I believe that He can unlock a space in your heart where you have not left room. You've let fear and insecurity control. We're just going to sing in the presence of God. The psalmists are going to sing, and we're just going to make room. And at the altar, tell the Lord what you need. Tell Him what you long for this morning. I will make room. I will make room. Just touch today, Lord. Bypass the priest and the pastor. Just come down and touch today, Lord. And I will make room. The healing wings of God, Lord, show up at the altar, a place where men and women meet God. Emotional turmoil, things that need to be dealt with, bring healing. Physical ailments, bring healing. Bring healing today, Lord brokenness bring healing and restore whatever you want to i will make break down the walls all my religion come on his way's better his way is better Your way is better. Come on, give him your tradition today. Give him religion just for religion's sake. Cast it before the Lord. Ask for a move of God. 
in your life. A change, a shift. Even right now. sing that out before the Lord. I will make room. I will make room for you. Come on, His presence is here this morning. Make space at the altar in your chairs. Make space. I will make room. I will make room for you. Now, Lord, we simply do that. We make room for you to rearrange. We believe that you're speaking to us even right now, but all throughout this service, we make room for you. We open our hearts for you to occupy, Holy Spirit, the places that you want to fill. We have no agenda other than this today. We want to leave here changed in your presence. That there even right now would be a fullness of joy, that the weeping would be turned into laughter, that the downcast soul and spirit and face would look up for our redemption draws nigh. Lord, use today, use today to glorify yourself through this local assembly as we trust you, as we pray, as we reach for you, as we make room for you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's like, it's like you can feel us given the Holy Spirit invitation, right? It's like, just come on in. You know, we've been, we've been seeking the Lord over the last several weeks, and, and we've been talking. If, if you are a guest with us right now, um, we're glad you're here. But what we're getting ready to do is not for you. And I don't mean that in a rude way, and you'll know in just a moment. I want to invite you to just take a seat. We've been talking about during the month of March, what would we give up for God in the sake of missions? That missions piece would be missions and outreach here in this local church. I I shared a few things. I I told you we're doing a surgery in the Congo right now. We got $1,000 going out to Ukraine relief. So many different things that we're doing. And the way that we do that is this pool that we have to draw from from March of every year. It's, it's an impact offering that we're making. I've been talking to you all about it. If you're giving to this online, you could just choose impact online. Can you bring me one of those? Here's one right here, Joy. And we just made, made this up. Uh, this one's got an offering in it right here. Somebody's already set aside their offering, laid it on the altar of God. One of the, one of the uh, kids in our church. Um, I won't say the name, but how many of you know the Lord blessed their faithfulness? They're downstairs and they went ahead and left it on the altar. But on it, it's simple. It says, March Missions 2022, go into all the world. In person, I will give. Online, I will give. Or by mail, I will give. Now, I want to say this. This is a very generous church, and Merrimack Heights Church just shouted out amen, especially if you're generous. It's like, that's me. But I'm not going to take two offerings today. Offering is not a time that we try to manipulate and work you up. We always just say this, let's be faithful to the Lord. But the Lord, through the month, We've been talking about what would you do in March? What would you give up? And my prayers that you've been meeting, talking as a family. Some parents have because their kids laid it on the altar before the Lord. And I pray that you've set that aside. 
maybe you haven't. Maybe it's like, that's right, Pastor. We totally forgot about it. But don't bypass the step that I'm getting ready to challenge you in. For the next 30 seconds, 40 seconds, I want you to just fill in that piece right there of, Lord, this is what we are doing as an individual, as a family, for this specific offering to the Lord in missions and outreach, an impact offering. When a disaster rolls through, we're going to be a part of helping boots on the ground. When people need food, we're going we're gonna to send them hot meals. It's going to come through this offering. Would you take just a few moments to write that down? And in just a minute, just a minute, I'm going to invite you to come. We're going to stand at the altar again, and we're going to consecrate these offerings before the Lord. Amen? So take time to prepare. Like, he's having us get up and walk to the altar again. First of all, if you're that against it, don't do it. Don't walk up here and get mad. Here's what I'm not doing. I don't want the church to see everybody who's giving. I want you to find the altar of God and say, Lord, I I am doing something. I'm making a choice before you to do something regarding the specific thing that we've been asking for. Church, that might be a dollar. That's the step you can take. Don't say, I can't go to the altar with a dollar. Why not? If that's what the Lord called you to do, release it unto his hand. Just a minute, I'm going to invite you to come. We're going to pray over this. We're going to pray over the offering today. Who believes God will breathe on this and blow on it and multiply it? He has so many different times. And one of the things that I'm learning in my life as you, it's easy to come in and say, Lord, make room. We make room for you. One of the things I always want to make room for, for the Lord, is in the area of my finances. I want to make room for God right there in the center of my bank account. Investments that you have, God, I'm making room for you. And I invite you this morning, if you will, those who have planned and prepared, maybe you're going to give online this week. That's okay. Take the step of faith today. Would you join me at the altars on both sides as we lift these together? I'm going to encourage couples to come together. If you're giving together, families that, that are giving together, just, just come onto the altar. We're going, to, we're going to lift it before the Lord. <clears throat> we're going to pray over it. I'll hold these few that are here. You just come on in, just crowd on in here this morning. What a, what a great response. Now, can you, at the altar of God, can we just lift both hands before the Lord? Lord, today, we take these March missions, impact offerings, and we lay them at the altar of God. We are making room for you this morning. Lord, for the last two years, this church has seen it. You you have done amazing things because people made room. They let go. As our hands are up today, we let go of that which we could have held on to. We could have spent it on something we were excited about. We could have put it towards a vacation, a toy, God, a hobby. But Lord, we decided in our heart we would give something up for the movement of the gospel through, through uh, missions, Lord, through outreach. And I pray, Lord, as all over this place, at the altar and sitting in these chairs, those joining us online, people have been faithful. I pray now, Lord, that you would help us. I pray that you would strengthen us. I pray, Lord, that as we not only give, but we pray in the months to come, even prophetically on how these offerings will be used to help people. We pray that, again, you would, loaves and fishes, it it will be significant, God, I know, I've seen it, but we pray that you would multiply what's been given. And what we thought we were going to be able to do, we would be so able to do so much more exceedingly abundantly because, Lord, you moved in. Again, we lift our hearts to you, and I thank you for the generosity of this local church, and I pray your blessing upon each and every one of them in Jesus' name. And everybody said this morning, amen, amen. We might need some help, John, collecting these. Um, Just again, if if you're wondering, Pastor, what do I do now? I said I would give online. We have probably 85 or more percent of the church that do that. You're going to go online. You're going to find that secure giving link, and you're going to scroll down to the impact area, and that's where you're going to give for this specific offering. I also want to thank you 
for supporting 17 missionaries every month. Is that not cool? And, and that did not happen with this. That did not happen with this. That happened because on a recurring basis, basis monthly, people are saying, I want to give consistently towards missions. We also have a goal of moving from 17 missionaries by the end of this year to 25 missionaries as a local church. And that happens as the Lord begins to speak to our heart and do wonderful things in us and through us. I'm going to ask you as Joey's coming, can you just talk among yourself? Can you greet somebody there in front of you? Turn around real quick and just say hello this morning. You had to do it, Pastor. You had to release them. Now I don't know if I can get them back. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, if this is your first or second time here at Merrimack Heights Church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, in your uh, bulletin packet, you should have received a card that looks a lot like this. It says, Welcome to Merrimack Heights Church on it. If you wouldn't mind just taking a moment and filling out whatever information you feel comfortable with, we'd love to get you some more information about the things going on here and the ministries going on here at Merrimack Heights Church. So uh, please uh, fill that out. Uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, we promise not to spam you, uh, and drop those in the black boxes uh, on your way out today. Um, also, there's a place for prayer and testimonies there. Church, do we believe in the power of prayer? Okay, well, most of you do. Um, so make sure that you are, are putting your prayer requests on here, uh, so, uh, church, so that we can pray with you as a church staff and agree with you because most of you believe that God answers prayer. Amen. A few things coming up that you need to be aware of. Oh, I get to start off with my personal favorite. Youth camp is coming up, so sign up as soon as possible to reserve your spot. Camp will fill up, so please make sure that you email me or see me so I can get you the link to sign up there. Uh, also, um, school staff Easter basket blessing is here. That's the mouthful. Uh, I, it was everything that I could do to threaten some youth kids during the lock-in to not partake in the, the Easter basket snacks here. So uh, make sure that you're bringing those in. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we bring all those in by April 10th. Also, save the dates. Friday, April 15th, 6.30 to 7.30 is our Good Friday service. You won't want to miss out on that. That's going to be a good time. Also, Sunday, April 17th is our Easter service. My goodness, I can't believe it's already here. So start inviter, inviting others to these events. Also, ladies, I don't know all the information. All I, all I see here is that you want to save the dates for April 29th and 30th. More info to come on that. So don't plan your vacation for that time, even though I already have, <clears throat> which, which is good. So I won't be going. Thanks, Jeanette. Uh, also, uh, again, uh, you can give three ways. You can give in the, in the black boxes uh, as you exit. You can give online at merrimackheights.com, and you can give to the P.O. Box. I think we have it on the screen, P.O. Box 1205, Arnold, Missouri, 63010. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much, God, for, Pastor already said, a generous church. I pray that you would bless all the offerings, God, the missions offerings, the regular tithes and offerings, God, that, that your kingdom would move forward. We thank you for that. God, I pray as pastor comes to speak, God, that we would open our ears and our hearts to hear what you have to say to us through him this morning. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joey. <clears throat> what an exceptional service we had last weekend as we had individuals who followed the instruction of Jesus the direction of scripture, and they were baptized in water. Did anybody else have an amazing time last weekend? <clears throat> I mean, Pastor Tony did a, a phenomenal job, and it was just, it was kind of one of those electric days. And I loved it because those that are guests with us today, we have a baptismal tank under the lid up here. And when the uh, bass player and acoustic player are not up here, we can lift that lid up. And underneath it, we have this nice, warm baptismal tank. And people made a decision to be fully dunked, fully submerged or emerged in water and said, hey, that watery grave represents 
what my life used to be? Who's thankful that God washes our sins away and he does that through salvation, but who's thankful for the picture that he's left for us, which is baptism? It is a model, it is a step of faith that we are called to take. I had one of the guys in the back room that just after said, Pastor, I just feel like a weight has come off of me. He said, I feel lighter. Isn't that awesome how God visits us all in different ways? And maybe that wasn't your baptism experience, but this is what he was experiencing. And as March was the thematic to the topics of repentance and baptism, we're going to jump into April, and the entire month, we are going to be preaching on the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts. And the church shouted, let's go, right? Right? So all through it, we're going to be, I can't wait for Easter Sunday. I'm going to give you kind of a challenge for that as we just move through that. But we're thankful that as we are on these specific things that the Lord is showing up and he's teaching us some things. And um, I don't think that today is going to be uh, anything different. Matter of fact, you know this, the things that we're teaching on on Sunday right here we're actually walking through and diving a little bit deeper on Wednesday nights. I know it's hard to ask questions. Most of you don't stop me and say, hey, pastor, what about that? What about this? But we have a space on Wednesday night, and our kids are going through that curriculum. Our youth are going through that curriculum. Our young adults are adults. And I'm so thankful for all of the reports and all the things that people have been saying that it's been a blessing to them. If you don't feel that it's been a blessing to you, don't give up on the Purple Book, Take the Journey. Keep plugging through it because it will help you. During baptisms last Sunday, you, you might remember the steps that we took. First of all, we do follow what we would call a biblical protocol in baptizing people. Who as a kid practiced baptismals like in your aunt's pool? You, we, we did that kind of stuff. I guess pastor's kids do that. We're like, all right, baptize you. But you don't just baptize and say, okay, you're baptized, God is good. You don't say, I baptize you in the name of God, right? But the, the scripture lays out this protocol for us. And last Sunday, you'll see, and I'm not the only one that does baptisms. We've had fathers, uh, moms can baptize kids. We have a, we have a way to do that and, and a process to do that. But we baptize them. You remember this? I took a, an individual under the water. I have the blessing of baptizing my nephew last weekend, and I took him under the water. I said, in the name of the Father, the Son, am I done yet? And of the Holy Spirit, right? Why do I do that? Well, let's look at a scripture today found in Matthew chapter 28. Many of you will know this. You could quote it. Matthew chapter 28, 18 says this, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority, somebody shout all authority, authority. has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age." This is the process that believers are to follow. How many of you understand that we are called to share our faith? When new converts come to Christ, we are called to baptize them in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It represents the Trinity. Now, let me ask a few questions this morning. Who is thankful for God the Father? Okay. Who is thankful for God the Son? Amen. Let's get equal on this. Amen. And who's thankful for God, the Holy Spirit? The the hymn writer said, God in three persons. Finish it with me. Blessed Trinity. How many times have we heard in history on some YouTube clip, well, Trinity is not in the Bible? Well, the concept of Trinity is in the Bible. The word Trinity is not in the Bible, but a lot of the English words that you're reading, they're not in the original Bible either. They were transliterated, transliterated, and out of that, there are certain words that didn't exactly fit, but we found the closest thing. So the Trinity, God in three persons, three personalities, one God. Somebody shout Trinity this morning. So I want to focus today's message I want to have a kind of a pinpoint focus on the Holy Spirit, 
And I wanna walk you through the process of introducing you to one of my friends. And he's part of the Godhead. Now, some of you would say, well, that sounds kind of casual. Well, well, you seem pretty r- rambunctious when we start singing, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I mean, you guys are dancing around, clapping, singing the words. The Holy Spirit is a friend to me. And he's a friend to other individuals in this room. And there's several things that could be happening today. Maybe some lack understanding or need some support on how do I focus on my relationship with the Holy Spirit? How? Let me say this. The Holy Spirit, see these last two letters right here that say it? The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a him. He is a personality. You're not having a relationship with it. You're not having a relationship with it. You're not having a relationship with it. You are having a relationship with the triune God, the Trinity, God in three persons. He's not just this mystical figure out in left field in our services that if we really sing the right camp meeting songs, he'll come in. Or if we recreate a women's conference or men's conference or a youth camp, he might show up. You know how you've been touched by the Spirit? And oftentimes that happens when you get away. God wants to do that every weekend at Merrick Heights Church. But there are certain times that our hearts are more open to it and ready for it and prepared. So regardless of where your spectrum is on you have a great relationship with the Spirit, and you might even be thinking, Pastor, mine's probably better than yours, and that's okay. I make room for you this morning. <laughs> Or, or possibly you're at the end of the spectrum where you're just not really sure and, and, and you lack even some basic understanding on who he is as God in your life. My prayer is this over the, this month of April is that everyone in this local church would draw closer and have a deeper relationship with the personality of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the greatest tongue talker here the greatest person that does prophecy, whatever we want to go through, the the, the people that we would put as most spiritual, I'm talking about all of us going deeper because how many of you know the Holy Spirit wants to touch us afresh no matter who we are? So somebody just shout, I'm going deeper. Now, I've made it really, really easy, and I was going to bring one up here, but that happens a lot that I forget. I gave you a handout today. This handout was prepared this week for you. I didn't create the handout. A team created it. They passed it out today. And I am making it as easy as I can for you to take notes on a Sunday. And today is fill in the blank Sunday. Uh, Again, I have made it as simple as possible. And we're also, and if you need to pop up and get some more on the tables in the back, for those of you that take two or three pages of notes and you've come to me and you're like, Pastor, the note thing that you're providing is not enough. We have stacks of them in the back. At any point, you can get up and go get more and take more notes, and I promise you, you will not offend me, and that's going to happen every week. We're thankful for the Father. We're thankful for the Son. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit, and probably not a one of us has not heard these, even online. We've heard all of these individuals of the Godhead, And, and God has revealed himself And in his revelation, in the blessed Trinity, we have to understand that God is completely unified in and of himself. The the Spirit, the Son, and the Father are not like arm wrestling this week on on who's who's the best, right? No, there's, there's no power trip in God. There's no, hey, can, there's no, hey, can I get in your lane for a while and function the way that you function? There's none of that. And, and he's made it crystal clear, not only through scripture, but also how the body is to function. And we're gonna be talking about those things. But, but I wanted to give you this, and I'll start over here with the father. The father adopts us through the works of God the son, Jesus Christ. Everybody get that? The father adopts us. You could not be adopted if Jesus didn't come to the cross. It is the adoption or your acceptance of the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross that got you in. So the Father adopts us through the works of Jesus Christ on the cross, and and he is equipping us for the results of Christ or for the works of Christ 
by empowering us by God the Holy Spirit. Does everybody understand that? So the three of them are working together. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are equal. They function differently, but they are equal. And, and you will see on the stage today that I've got the Father and I've got the Son and I've got a great gap here and I have the Holy Spirit. Now, this, this model is not theologically sound. Who would agree with that here at Merrimack Heights Church? But I am using this strictly for traction and a model and a point of, of uh, uh, a, a model so that you can see an illustration, a prop, so that you can see where some of us are on this. And let's not put everybody else in that category. Let's make sure we're not there. So would you go on a journey with me today? And I guess we could have called the message Closing the Gap this morning. We could have called it that, but I will take the rest of my time to take what the Holy Spirit has given me and uh, preach it back to you. I got a group of pastors that I'm always texting, always texting, and then we'll, I'll send, you know, hey, how can I pray for you? They say, how can I pray for you? And, and I heard this thing a long time ago, and I, I, this is my response to a lot of those guys. Uh, just pray that I would preach it back to the church the way that God gave it to me. I'm like, if I could just preach it back the way that it was last night when I was running through this and praying over the day, I'll be real pleased, and I think the Father would be pleased with me. So let's break this down. Many are comfortable, many are comfortable with the personality of the Father. We could take it back to Yahweh, Yahweh, and we could give you the Hebrew definition on that. M many are comfortable with that. Many are satisfied with the nature of the Son. You could say where he died on Calvary's cross, he's the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. But some of us don't know how to process this personality. And I'm not coming at you if you're that person. I pray that our hearts this month would be enlightened and open, but, but I would like to say a few things that I believe could be the reason that we have created, again, this is not theological, this is a model, but why we have created a gap between father and son, and the spirit kind of is sitting over here, and we don't always know what to do with him. The first being this, sometimes it's just a lack of us opening up our understanding, because we were raised a certain way, we attended a certain type of church, we, we all understand this, and we just, our heart, it, it's just there's no understanding. The other would be this, when it came to this gap or when it comes to this gap, some have just been thrown into or, or brought in front of bad teaching regarding the Holy Spirit. I hate to say it, but some of it's even heresy and some of it blasphemy when it comes to the work of the Holy Spirit, God in our life, because there's peace in what he wants to bring and what he wants to do. The other gap that, that I see is we have the Father and the Son, but again, the Bible hasn't created this gap, but man has created this gap or this space, is I just don't know how to approach it. And we might hear a sermon that says, look up every verse in the Bible that deals with the Holy Spirit, read it, memorize it, and study it. And we come out of that and presto changeo never happened. It's like, I still don't really understand it. I still don't really know. And I'm not against pulling out. Would that we would read more scripture on Father, Son, and Spirit, but specifically to this message, the Spirit. But sometimes we just don't know how to approach it. And then the last reason that I find being this great gap, and I've experienced all of these in my ministry from a young age until an older age. I'm, I'm getting there. And, and when I see this gap, the other one is this, and I think it's oftentimes the most sad, it's just that I'm completely closed off to fully submitting to the Holy Spirit. I mean, can I call it what it is? I'm just too prideful. I'm not gonna yield that much. I mean, God, I'll make room with a missions chat. I'll go big on that. I'll, I'll, make room by, I'll make room by going to the discipleship things on Wednesday night. I mean, that's pretty safe. But completely submitting to the realm and the rule and, and the gentleness of the Holy Spirit in my life, there are many people who just don't want to go there because we feel that it can affect how we look. And can I just say this today? I think how we look needs to be affected. I think it all needs to pass through Scripture. It's kind of like the mirror, uh, Olivia's mirror a few weeks ago. And we were looking into that, and that was a reflection of Christ. And we're like, Holy Spirit, am I becoming more like you? 
Do I carry the attributes that you carry? Folks, study in the Holy Spirit. Where did we get so off? This is not a scary thing or a daunting thing. We could relax in the reality that Father and Son want us to have him, fully have him, not just a part of him, but receive him in fullness. And I'm praying today, I'm praying today that the gap is closed and and I'll do my best with what God's given me. Turn in your Bibles to Joel chapter two. Joel chapter two, verses 28 and 29. And we'll have it on the screens, but if you have your Bible, flip there. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward that... I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on your men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now, do you remember that I wanted to kind of take this message and walk you through a journey of introducing you to my friend? Joel is trying to brief them. He's trying to show them what is to come. The prophet is writing about an experience that is not yet, but will come to pass. Everybody see that? So he's preparing, I'll say, the church for what was to come. And he's kind of giving this short introduction. It's like, have you ever been in this situation before where you had a friend and you loved that friend, but you were going to have dinner with a group of people and you gave them some preliminary thoughts about this friend before he came over. Or you were having this friend, and he was coming over to the house, and you're on the phone with the other friend that's going to be there. You're going to throw cornhole in the front yard, and all of a sudden, you're like, hey, let me tell you a little bit about my friend. Just so, so let me tell you where he works. Let me tell you a little bit about his wife, his kids. Tell you about his life, where he lives. So you'll start briefing. You'll start giving them some information. Joel, I believe, is, is doing this. And he's, he's talking to the church that will be. The Holy Spirit does not arrive on the scene and is, watch this, created when Joel starts talking about him. The Spirit has always been because the Spirit is God. He has no beginning. He has no end. Matter of fact, I can go back to Genesis 1. The book of Genesis will reveal the Trinity. The Godhead three in one. Let us make man in his image. Genesis 1, the Spirit was hovering over the surface of the water. So when Joel talked about him, he wasn't like, now he's gonna start working. He was talking about a greater work that they would begin to see. He was talking about a greater outpouring that was gonna take place. And when Joel writes it, this really just kinda, I think I could say it this way, it just kinda rests for a while. For years, this has not happened yet. Does everybody get this? It was written way back here, and for years, another decade, another decade, another decade, and a century goes by. We, we haven't seen it yet, but it's, it's, it's hidden here in the prophets. It's written. And I want to read another verse today that I believe will help us. It's the word of God found in Acts chapter 2, 14 through 18. Acts 2, 14 through 18. Now, we're going to get to the fill in the blanks in a moment, and I'll tell you when we get there so you're not confused, Okay. It says in Acts 2, 14 through 18, but Peter standing up with the 11, so how many of them were were there? 12, very good, you're good at math. Peter standing up with the 11 raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Everybody remember what was written in Joel? Okay, let this be known to you and heed my words for these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now we're getting somewhere, right? Scripture's coming to life in a new way. And it shall come to pass in the last days, God, or says God, I love that part right there, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants, says God, and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. You know what we as the body should be after? 
What Joel was talking about is what was going to come because it came and it's still pouring out. We should long for our kids having the fullness of the Spirit. We should long for the place that if we don't, to have an encounter with God, that he moves us to a new place of what Joel was talking about. Says, God, I am pouring out my Spirit. We could have church just with that this morning. I love it. There's an old song that says, this is that, spoken by the prophet Joel. Peter is standing up and he's saying, this is that. This is what was written or written and lodged in scripture, Joel 2. This is that. We are seeing what we've been looking for and he's finally shown up. Look at what's happening in our kids. Look at our old men, our, our, our young men, our women and men. Folks, God wants to use the whole church. Where do we get this? Stop, stop this? stop this study of does God want to use men and women in the church? Yes and yes. Where do we get that we can write out the New Testament? We can't write out a deaconess from Scripture. We, we can't say, well, hey, yeah, but this kind of like this. God is pouring out his spirit on men and women God is pouring out his spirit. It is a personality. It is not an it. And everyone who will open up their life to this part of the Godhead, he will rock your world. And you will look back and you will say, man, I was worried about my hair being undone and, and it's not running down my face. I was worried about being on the floor for hours. Now you will long to find places for the spirit to touch you like that again. Because he changes you and you learn that it's not about you in this, in this passage of Scripture right here, and I'm not going to get into the depths of this, but when the Spirit begins to come in the New Testament, he comes in in fire. Now, when the fire of the Holy Spirit shows up, uh, it's a little bit different than a fire that would be in our home. Because if you wake up and your house is burning, you are going to start by calling out to your kids and your wife, and you're going to do everything that you can to make sure they're safe, right? Right? then what are you going to do? Somebody shout, run. You're getting out. You're not staying in. You're waiting for the fire department to show up. But can I say this? When the Spirit shows up, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. Don't run into your insecurities. Don't tuck away into your fear. Don't say, can I go get a drink or run to the restroom at this point? Say, Lord, I'm running to the fire, not away from the fire. I'm running into your presence, not away from your presence. I need to be changed by the fire, caught up in this fire. I, I need the full essence of the Holy Spirit. So I want to take the next several moments, and I want to break down, as I introduce you to my friend, I want to break down five likes of the Holy Spirit and five things that the Spirit dislikes. I want to introduce you to my friend, and I believe that God will use this month to start something, not that things have not been happening, but I want to introduce you to my friend in a greater way because I believe that Holy Spirit is getting ready to show up here in this house in ways that it's been a while that he has. I also believe he's going to show up in new ways that we've never seen as God just begins to move and breathe through the life of people. You have your fill in the blanks with you this morning, and I'm just gonna walk you through this. I, I wanna tell you as we're getting ready, I'm giving introduction to my friend, the Holy Spirit. I wanna give you two fill in the blanks for number one here. The Holy Spirit likes to, here's the two fill in the blanks, help and counsel. The Holy Spirit likes to help you, and the Holy Spirit likes to counsel you. Now, anyone that needs help in counseling, shout amen. Okay, you just identified yourself, right? We need help. We need counsel. There is no greater counsel than the counsel of the Spirit. There is no greater help than the help of the Spirit. So the Spirit likes to help you, and the Spirit likes to counsel you. And this is found in Psalm chapter 1, and that fill in the blank is going to be verses 1 and 2. So you can write that down in your notes. Psalm 1, 1 and 2 says this, blessed or blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. 
but he delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates both day and night. Now, I want us to get this as we understand that the Spirit wants to help in counsel. Scripture actually teaches us that we need people in our life to give us counsel. So I'm not bypassing that. I'm not saying, hey, don't get counsel in your life. I'm not saying that at all. However, we need the counsel of the Spirit before we need any counsel from man. So first, I yield to him. Through that yielding, he will say things like this. Trust me, because he has. I think it would be a good idea for you to meet with so-and-so. And when the Spirit gives me counsel to meet with so-and-so, that so-and-so is not going to be filled with worldly protocol and worldly systems. The counsel from the Spirit will line us up with those that are living in the Spirit or in relationship to make spiritual decisions in our life. Now, some of you are like, but Pastor Brian, there's a ton of great information out there. I-, I wouldn't negate that. That's true. But who also believes we need to be very careful and set up some guards of what information we like or allow to come into our life? Because it can also creep into our theology, in our doctrine, doctrine. Things that sound really good and look really good, but are they motivated by the Spirit? So those that need the help and the counsel of the Spirit, he likes to bring it and I'm thankful that he does, and and I'm introducing you to my friend, the Holy Spirit, and when he comes to the house, I just want to tell you, that's what he likes, but I also want to let you know what he dislikes. The Spirit, and you can fill in the blanks here, the Spirit dislikes us seeking help outside of his counsel. The Spirit dislikes us seeking help outside of his counsel. What I mean by that is when our knee-jerk reaction is to, let's just say this, is to get our, our house in order financially by what the stock market says. All right, well, that's gonna fluctuate. But when I come to the spirit and I say, Lord, just how do you want things to happen financially? He's always going to lead me back to the word. He's always going to lead me in truth. So the spirit dislikes when Brian or any believer just tries to get help outside of his counsel when he's not. Did you know the Bible says he's a jealous God? Have you ever had a situation before where, because you had the intellectual capacity, you had the experience, have you ever had a situation where you wish somebody that was close to you, they were like in your, in your five or 10 people that, that you have influence over or, or alongside of, and you wish they would have come to you first because you could have helped them before it got as bad as it was? I wonder if God, being the jealous God, the Holy Spirit ever just sits back and says, I wish you'd have just came to me first. I like helping you. I like giving you counsel. But I also dislike when you move outside of this and and, and you seek counsel outside of his counsel. Here's what I want you to know as we're working to close this gap today is every time we yield to the Spirit, And we say, Holy Spirit, this is where it might start for you. I open up my life for you to be my helper. I open up my life for you to be my counsel. I've ran to a lot of very bright people, and it has led me down a road that has not accomplished anything in my life. Let me show you what happens. When we do that and yield to him, that wide gap begins to close. The Spirit wants to help you. The Spirit wants to counsel you. Somebody shout, move the chair. We're closing this gap that man has created. We're talking about the Holy Spirit today. I want to give you the second like of the Holy Spirit. The second like of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit likes supporting you in prayer. You can fill in those blanks this morning. He likes supporting you in prayer, and this is found in Romans chapter 8. That is a fill in the blank, verses 26 through 27. Who needs the support of the Holy Spirit in prayer? Well, if you didn't raise your hand, let me read this verse and see what you think. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, okay? Now, he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 
So I want you to know when you hit, I was talking to a person over the last couple days who kind of hit a prayer wall and, and they were just kind of talking to me and said, I just, I really don't feel anything when I pray. Here's what I told him. And this might be the worst advice. I said, stop trying to feel something when you pray. Just pray. Go to the Father, be disciplined. Part of why I said that, I can't, I can't count how many times I haven't felt something when I prayed. Nor can I count the times when I haven't felt something when I prayed. I'll get a text that says, hey, Brian, thank you for praying for me. Thank you. Somebody's been praying. Some, you, you've had that before in, in your life. It, it's wonderful to see how God begins to work. When we begin to look at the Spirit, he's searching the, the deep things of God. He's, he's praying, and he's praying through us, and he longs to pray through us. Write this down. It's not a fill in the blank, but on that extra sheet, if you got one. The Holy Spirit desires to help me pray. God is not working against you in your prayer life. He's not hoping at the end of the week that he can say, hey, you only spent three minutes with me this week. I mean, come on, get it together. The Holy Spirit wants to walk alongside of you. Matter of fact, he'll actually, this is what's really cool, because a lot of times we might even say this, well, Brian, I, I would pray, but I don't even know what to pray. That is awesome that you are at that spot because you're closing the gap. The Spirit knows what to pray so that when you don't know what to pray, you're entering your prayer closet. You're like, God, I got nothing. The Spirit supports you in prayer. As you open up your life, things will begin to come out. He will pray through you. So what does the Spirit? We understand that he likes to help us in prayer, walk alongside of us and support us in prayer. What does the Spirit dislike? The Spirit dislikes a prayerless life in the life of a believer. The Spirit does not, he's not looking at you saying, hey, awesome job that you did not pray this week. I'm not saying that the Spirit's mad at you. I'm not saying that he's given you less points this week. I'm saying the Spirit understands the priority of prayer in the life of the believer. And when an individual ceases to pray or they are not praying, they do not have the spiritual nourishment to be everything that Jesus has called them to be. You ever, who's ever fasted for a day? Like, and, and when I say this, understand my heart. Who's done what is called a real fast? Water and no food for, let's say, 12 hours. Some of you are like, I'm, I'm humble. I don't really want to wave, wave my hand. That's fine. What does your body feel like? Somebody said weak. Anybody else? Pain. Do you know what everybody else feels like when they go 12 or 24 hours without food and just water? Pain. And we'll fast a lot of things, and I'm not downgrading that. But when we look at this real fast that Jesus walked through, and I, and I, and I understand all this. There's medical reasons on why people can't. And, and, and if those are the things that, that you're going through, trust your doctor, spend time with your doctor. But many of us could go 6, 12 hours without food and just drink some water and say, Lord, what, what, what the Holy Spirit understands the priority of prayer in our life. He understands that the priority of prayer in our life is sometimes painful. He likes to support us in prayer. He dislikes when we have a prayerless life as a believer. And when I come to the Holy Spirit, I mean, the disciples did this with Jesus. And they're like, Jesus? I mean, he, they didn't say, teach us how to do miracles. They didn't say this. Lord, teach us how to preach, move the crowd, build churches. What'd they say, church? T teach us how to pray. And when we yield to the Spirit, simply by this, if we want to close the gap, and say, Holy Spirit, my prayer life has been awful. And I know you know. And I yield to you right now. And I pray when I don't know how to pray, you would pray through me. I pray that I would honor my prayer times that I set aside with you. I'm going to tell you, then we close another gap that man has not created, not the Bible. And we're moving closer to how the unity of the Holy Spirit works in our life. Number three, let me give you the third like of the Holy Spirit. I'm introducing you to my friend, the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit likes it when we make room for him. The Holy Spirit likes it when we make room for him. Uh, Maddie was getting uh, worship together this weekend, or for this weekend. She was downstairs. Um, her and Joy were working in one of the rooms downstairs. And I began to hear this song, and she's like going, and I will make room for you. And it's like coming up through my vents. And I ran to her, and I said, I'm preaching on this Sunday. And, and I went to get my sheet, my fill in the blank, and I'm like, no, I'm speaking on this Sunday. I go into the copier room, I get it, and I'm like, look at that, it's this point. The Holy Spirit likes when we make room. I'm speaking, well, you're being led by the Spirit, you hear by the Spirit. It's not just a new song we sang at Merrimack Heights Church. He is prophetically singing and speaking over us. Merrimack Heights Church, I love you. Will you make room for me? Will you make room for me? Will you get out of the way of the traditions that you've created and religion for religious sake that I check off some boxes, but I leave just as empty? Will you make room for me? Will you go face down? Will you allow the tears to flow? Will you allow the tongue to flow? Will you yield my heart, not just for one encounter, but would you yield to me Always. I don't know about you, Mary Kite Church. I just don't think we should ever have a dud service. Not if we have saints of God chasing God down. I think altars should be filled every week. I'm not twisting your arm. I'm just saying we're making room for you, Lord. We're broken and we're hurting, or we had the most intense victory than we had in 10 years. Give us a church again, Lord, that will run to the altar of God. Say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. I'm just making room. I got to get to the next encounter with God. Yesterday's manna was not enough. I think he's teaching us to make room. In your fill in the blanks, the Holy Spirit likes when we make room for him. I want to use 1 Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. So 1 Corinthians, you can fill in the blank, 12, 7 through 11. It says this. this I love this scripture. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of who? The profit of all. That's why the manifestation of the Spirit is given. It's for the profit of all. For one, or for to one, is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, different kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit work all of these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. I asked the Lord how I could best model this point and I felt him say, you could best model it with you. And I will say this, I'm not always the best model. I'm in black today, so this is slimming, okay? You, you know what I'm saying. You will hear me get up here and preach and get up here and teach, and the Lord has put something on me regarding this. There are people that can preach and teach different by the applause of man, by how many they can get in the room on the success of men, but I am just trying to be faithful with what the Lord has given me for this local church. I am not saying I'm the best, nor am I saying we are the best church in Jefferson County. Jesus Christ has the best church in the world. That's it. But there are giftings and abilities and, and different ways that people attach. So last weekend, we had Pastor Tony come up and speak. He was coming through, and I'm like, hey, we're in a series right now. He said, hey, I, 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 can, I can join you in that, and the Holy Spirit turned it on him on Saturday, and he walked in and said, hey, I kind of have a fresh thing that the Lord wants me to share. Can I share a little bit about baptism? I said, it's, be led by the Spirit. So the reason, and I'm not saying this, I'm not saying this is a me thing, but the reason, because we have a board of deacons, we have elders, the reason that Pastor Tony was standing up here last weekend is because we know that Pastor Tony had something to say to the flock. He has a teaching and a preaching gift. I will not only yield last weekend. 
How many of you know several weeks ago, Kevin Thole got up and shared his testimony, and he began to preach and begin to teach, and God used him. I will yield. I will yield all through the year. I think I'm up here about 36 times this year. Our staff will be up here preaching. People will be up here teaching. We've mapped that out. We've prayed. We've sought God. Lord, what do you want to do this year? Meaning, I understand that I might not have a gift, but it would be a disfavor for this church to put me up here every week because there are more giftings. So a, a under-shepherd has to manage giftings. So watch this. I will sit on the front row, and if you speak on a Sunday, I've got the pom-poms out, even if you don't see them in my hand. I don't know that anybody ever spoke that I, people are like, well, so are you gonna give me like notes at the end? I, I don't have some red pen that I'm writing up your report. I believe you've heard from the Spirit. I would prophesy this, bring it. Teach it with fire and passion. Prepare yourself, pray over it, fast over it. Be diligent with it. I mean, for the Trinity's sake, we're feeding the flock. Nor will I just start haphazardly picking people and saying, yeah, oh, here, you're gonna speak that Sunday. And you're, because some of us don't have those gifts and that's okay. So that's a teaching, preaching gift. Let's go into the spiritual gifts. Let's talk about the ways that we see the Holy Spirit move in. We have many people that have gifts of the Spirit that's been given to them, and they've been graced by that. Just like I have been given a gift, God has graced it with me. And sometimes I'll stand up, and sometimes I'll have to sit down. I have to make room for everybody in this section, and I have to make room for everybody in this section that it would be decent in order under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes making room is not the fact that I can do it, so I'm going to. Sometimes making room is I'm going to sit on it just a little bit. I'm going to wait. And I'm going to wait and see if there's somebody that the Spirit's been prompting. They've been growing in this gifting. And all of a sudden, a word of wisdom or knowledge comes out. A word in tongues comes out. And over here, ne never heard it, but a person shares an interpretation because they've been with Holy Spirit. They Making room is yielding. It is not about the fact that I can do it. It's, Lord, are you asking me to do it right now? So that's surrendered and submitted to every gift, not just the preaching, teaching gift. Would that we had more, and I believe that we will. I'm like, yeah, I've been filled with the Spirit for years. Let, let that go. Let, let the Spirit use you. Amen? Everybody understand what I'm saying this morning? So he likes when we make room for him. Well, what does the Spirit dislike? You could see that these are pretty simple. Uh, that one works with the other. Well, the Spirit dislikes when we give him no invitation. And I'm like, all right. You know, it's like, it's like you have three buddies. They're really, really close to you and a part of your life in a great way. And, and two of them, you, you got like a little, you, you, got, you got four recli or, or, yeah, four recliners there in the living room. And, and you've got, you, you, you sit in one and, and you ask your buddy Bill over here and your buddy John to sit in this one. And, and then I'm trying to think of people whose names don't go to the church. Zachary over here shows up at the door, and you're like, hey, bro, can you sit in the kitchen while we talk? You just give him no invitation because maybe we don't understand Zachary as much as the other guys. Maybe we have connected more. Even our theology, we've studied Yahweh, we've studied Jehovah, we've studied Yeshua, but we really haven't in the personality of the Spirit taken time. So I know these guys quite well, but, but this one over here is kind of on the fringe. The Holy Spirit doesn't like it when we don't give him invitation. And I'm not just talking about in a church service. I'm talking about in your life. When he's prompting you under the unction to take a step, and you're like, I know what you want me to do, but no. The, the Spirit doesn't like it. The Holy Spirit, can I, can I say this? We, we talked about this. It's, it's, it's really not an old school term, but it, I haven't heard it used in a long time. When we give him no invitation, we quench him. I was going to bring it in, but another prop that I forgot today. The Greek rendering that is to extinguish. The flame wanted to show up, but we put a fire extinguisher on it. The flame wanted to come in in power, but part of this section over here was comfortable with it, and most of this section 
So to keep everybody comfortable, we're, we're just gonna, let's just bring out the extinguisher today. Quenching also means in the Greek to stifle. I'm stifling the spirit. I'm suppressing the spirit. And you've heard this said, and it's very true. When Jesus was baptized, what do we see ascending from heaven and lighting on him? A dove representative of the gentleness of the spirit. The spirit is a gentleman. He won't break into your relationship and say, stop. He won't break into your finances and say, give. He won't break into your life and say, have a relationship with me right now. He's a gentleman. Who's ever been around a gentleman before? Gentlemen in this day and age really can go through it. I've seen it. I have seen it. Even in the Midwest, I have seen it. Somebody in their gentlemanly move, trying to open a door for somebody at the mall, and the other individual saying, I got it. I can open a door. Right? We know that he, my, my friend, the Holy Spirit, is sensitive. Who has a sensitive friend? I'm not talking about unhealthily sensitive. I'm talking about they just have a sensitivity about them. That what, what, might, have friend, what might offend one friend when you walk in and, and, you're, and, and, and you're like, hey, you got makeup right, right, right over here. The other friend, you could never do that live. You'd have to pull her in the back and say, hey, come here. We got to clean that makeup off your face. You got mascara coming down right there. Because one friend is more sensitive than the other. The Holy Spirit is a sensitive part of the Godhead. He is a gentleman. Just as a gentleman would open a door, God give us a church that would be a gentleman and a gentlewoman to the move of the Holy Spirit and us prop the door open wide for him and say, come on in. You're not going to offend us. We want you to move. We want you to rearrange. We want you to come in the way that you come in in your personality and we won't dodge it or bypass it or stop it or extinguish it or squelch it or quench it, Holy Spirit. We just want you to come in. You may say this morning, well, Pastor, I'm kind of uncomfortable on that spirit thing because when the spirit begins to move, you know, it might be the week that I brought my guest. I've had that before. I was just kind of wondering what's going on this Sunday. I'm, and and I, want to, I want to give an answer to the church online and to the church live. We are never going to quench the Holy Spirit for the sake of the comfort of people. When I have sin in my life and you have sin in your life and a preacher or a teacher gets up or you're sitting in your living room at home and a certain friend calls you that is living a life with God, you kind of start feeling, oh, this kind of feels different. And I'm not going to say I'm sorry to say it. I'm going to preach truth. I'm glad you feel that way. Because the Spirit is show, throwing you a life preserver. When your life is off and he's saying today is a day that you can get it into alignment. I believe that Jesus was the most seeker-sensitive man that ever walked this planet. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And he was not going to dodge their issue to get around it, placate it, and nine years later say, now I want to share Jesus. He was going to meet people at the well. He was going to draw a line in the sand that caused men of the day to scatter. I don't know what he said, but I don't think it was good to the people who ran. He said, I know you have sin. Yeah, but I've, 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 I've sinned several. I know. No, go. Sin no more. Not, no, come back next time. We'll have a waiver. Next, next time we'll, 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 we'll have the, kind of the spiritual candy session while I just share some sugar and then make it bitter. Nope. When the Lord confronts us and it hurts, that is the sugar. He's bringing us truth. He's, he's interrupting our world. And, and we might say, Pastor, I feel kind of uncomfortable at that at times, but I can't really plan the year out and say, hey, bring them to this service, bring them to this service. I would say this. I would encourage you on that specific week that you've invited that specific guest. I would say, well, this must be the Holy Spirit. And I would, in the Spirit, open up invitation and I would say, hey, Holy Spirit, come light right by me. My road needs it today. Why don't you get touched with the fire? 
so somebody else can see what getting touched with the fire looks like? Why don't you allow the Lord to have complete reign and, and rule in your life? When we do this, when we come to this place, like, God, I just, I want to, I want to make room for you. I don't want to squelch you. Even in my thoughts sometimes, I'm like, what if I bring this or that? I, I make room for you. And however you show up, Lord, I want you to show up, Spirit, however you, however you want to come. In your sensitivity, I would do nothing to offend or, quel- or squelch. Right now, I invite you to come. Well, what, what are we doing? We're closing the gap. It's getting a little bit harder for me to get through, if you have not noticed yet. Somebody shout, move a chair. The Spirit wants to guide us. He, he's not trying to cause us to be lost and without Him. He wants to guide us. He, he wants to help us. John 16, 13, and 14 says this, However, when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take of what is Mine and declare it to you. Church, if we ever need a person who will tell us of the things to come working in our life, it is the power of the Holy Spirit, not this afternoon, right now. It's kind of like a mountain Sherpa. If we were going to go climb as Missouri guys and gals go climb Everest together, I'm like, hey, has anybody ever like Sherpa a mountain before? Oh, no, we've just kind of the rolling hills of Missouri we're good with. How many of you, though, that's not going to handle 8,000, 10,000, 15,000 feet? If we're climbing Everest, we need a Sherpa. We need a guide. We need someone to help us. We need to whisper into the Spirit's ear, and we need to say, Holy Spirit, tell me of the things to come. Why is the church lost on the things to come? It's not about having improper eschatology or not going to Bible school. Revelation says, blessed is the man who reads it. We've got to go to the Holy Spirit and say, open that up. Show me of the things to come. Check this out. The Holy Spirit understands the terrain of the mountain. We are climbing Zion, the mountain of God, the hill of God. We are climbing it step by steps. Can I help you this morning? Holy Spirit, help me. There's wars and rumors of wars. What is to come? Sherpa, getting us to the next step. Holy Spirit, I'm not bypassing God. He is God. I am coming to him and I'm saying, hey, I I need your direction. There are pestilence of many kinds. Show me what's to come. And he'll show us and he'll help us and we don't have to be confused and lost and treading water. That's not the heart of God. It's not the heart of the Holy Spirit. He he likes to to give us direction. He likes to guide us. You say, Pastor, what does he dislike? Well, he dislikes closed hearts toward his direction. When he says, this is the way, this is the path. No, that, that side's steep. You're not ready for that terrain. Go this way. I see it. I know it. I'm telling you of the things to come. Step this way, not that way. He dislikes when we just close our hearts toward his direction. We're not open to the Holy Spirit. And when we're not open to the Holy Spirit, here's the the thing that breaks my heart. When people are not open to the work of the Holy Spirit, they can never fully discover everything that the Lord has for them living on this planet. But when I begin to open my heart to the Holy Spirit and his direction, and I even say, you know what? I've shut down your directions in the past. I've quenched you, but I just pray that you would help me. If you would pray this, I believe that the Holy Spirit would be fine with this. Holy Spirit, be my Sherpa. I'm climbing Zion. And you know the terrain. And when you do that, when you do that, you are closing the gap that man's questions, fears, insecurities, and prides has created. I want to give you one more. This won't take long. I'm talking about five likes of the Holy Spirit, five dislikes. I'm introducing you to my friend, the Holy Spirit. I wanted to let you know this morning because he's coming to the house. I told you he's coming to the house. Don't say I didn't tell you. I told you he's coming. There's been lift for a while on this. This isn't just because we came to this topic. The Holy Spirit is coming over. He's coming over. We see it. We feel it. We sense it. 
my friend, the Holy Spirit, I, I've got to let you in on something. He wants to empower you. He wants to plug you in. He wants to empower believers. His heart is to empower believers. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends or the end of the earth. That's Acts chapter 1.8. So he wants to empower us. He wants to endue us with power. He wants to fill us with power. We know that Jesus would be baptized in water, but there was a baptism of fire that would follow that to all that would open their heart to it. He, he likes he, he likes to empower us, but he dislikes us living without the power in our lives. Like, like, think about this just for one minute. I'm cutting a four by eight sheet of plywood in half. I've got a brand new DeWalt skill saw. Can I say that on copyright stuff? What's another brand? Makita? Give me another one. Craftsman? Okay, there we, now we'll be okay. We got a nice craftsman skill saw. Some of you are like, go back to DeWalt, please. We got a DeWalt skill saw, three quarter, four by eight sheet of plywood. And this section over here wants the power. So I give them the power saw. This section over here says, oh no, pastor, we're good. We've been fine living the way that we are. I've tried opening up my, my heart to that stuff before. My grandma was all about that. She was a holy roller. So I just simply say, okay, I give you a handsaw. Both will get the job done, but one will come in demonstration of power. Can somebody testify? We need to be holding the skill saw in 2022. We need to have the knowledge and the skill of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. We need to let some of the things fall off us and at least give it another try and say, Holy Spirit, I just invite you to come and empower me. And, and when you take these moments in your life and you say, Holy Spirit, empower me, you'll hear all kinds of stories. You'll hear about people that are tearing and it took 15 years for them to get filled with the Holy Spirit. That's fine, but it might not be your story. But once you edge him just a little bit closer, you're that much closer to being fully empowered by him. I don't understand it all. I've got to undo some of the teaching. Lord, some of the notes that I was studying, I've got to repent, and I've just got to say, Holy Spirit, you want all of me, and he nudges just a little bit closer, and, and you see just a small gap, a small separation, and you say, Holy Spirit, We've come this far. I am just diving in. Merrimack Heights Church, he will close that gap. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are not separate. They are operating in unity. And when we give them place, when we give them space in our services and in our lives, we have the blessed Trinity, three in one, one God, monotheistic, operating in three principles. And all we have to do with this last piece is prop open the door and say, Holy Spirit, come. Would you bow your hearts with me where you sit this morning? In the beginning of the service, I felt that it would be proper or it would be the right place to have the band come up and play the song, I Will Make Room. But I've got to be just as yielded to the Holy Spirit as you are. And although I feel that my heart was not inappropriate with that, I so liked how the Lord was using that to get me to this point today. I just thought it would be a great end. But I, helped, I felt the Holy Spirit just say, hey, just put on the brakes there. Just trust me this morning. I don't have some pad track to throw on today. I don't have the band to come up and sing a song to you today. And my message is done. 
but who would just simply say, I just want more of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to invite you. I'm not inviting you to the altar, but I'm going to invite you on the first Sunday of April, if that is you, I want you to just stand to your feet where you are, and I want you to just begin to pray. I'm not going to belabor this. Don't worry about this going to 4 o'clock this evening. I want, I want you where you stand, where you stand, I want you to just begin to pray. Holy Spirit, I come before you, and I'm, I'm, yesterday's manna is not enough. Yesterday's touch is not enough. Preaching this sermon is not enough. I fully yield to you. And I pray as the under-shepherd of this church that we would fully yield to you. I pray that we would not look back to the next last touch. I pray that we would not try to recreate moves of God, but that we would simply say, Holy Spirit, it's been a while since I've connected with you at the level that you've wanted me to. I've closed my heart off to some things and it might not even be the gifts. It might be reaching out to others. You've been stirring me, but I've been saying no. Father, or Holy Spirit, we open our heart to you. We allow you to be our guide. We allow you to be our prayer support. We make room for you this morning. 